greetings, everyone. Uh, again, I'm Shane Boyer, and uh, welcome to Women's Entrepreneurship Week. And uh, and today we've got two uh, women entrepreneurs, and uh, uh, right here we have uh, again uh, fun uh, in the name of what we're talking about. Uh, so we've got Pam DeMars and Allison Jennings from the Wow Zone. Uh, both are are graduates of Minnesota State University, and uh, excited to have them both here. And uh, and so we're going to uh, kind of talk a little bit about what the Wow Zone is and, uh, and how you got into that. So, well, welcome to both of you, and thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. All right. So we're going to uh, just start out. For, so first of all, I get I, about 15 years ago, Pam, you, you the Wow Zone uh, came about. Uh, what is the Wow Zone, and and how did that uh, how did that come about? Well, it is an interesting story. Um, we also have Victory Bowl, and we still have Victory Bowl here in Mankato. It's a 12 house, 12 lane bowling uh, facility with a food attachment restaurant. Um, but we've had it since 1973, and we saw the environment of this business, type of business, including more than just bowling. So our intent was to build an, a wow zone and close down Victory Bowl because we'd move everything to wow zone. Well, it, in the process of doing that, um, we went and visited other facilities around the country. We saw a need in Mankato for something more because our, our community was growing. We have a very good community and we wanted to do something that really had fulfilled the need in our community. So <clears throat> we finally were able to do that. We had really wanted to do it earlier, but it just didn't come together. And then 15 years ago, we were able to do it. We got the financing and we were able to, because we'd been working on other things up to that point, got the financing and started digging the hole in the ground built it from the ground up. It's a 42,000 square foot building and it has bowling, laser tag, mini golf, arcade games in it, a very nice sports bar restaurant and lots of meeting rooms. So it's a space that the community has used for many different things throughout these last 14 years. We're actually starting our 15th year now and we're, we're very blessed. What's very interesting is we've just remodeled or we're in the process of remodeling again because it's been 14 years. So like everything, you wanna keep it fresh and clean and we take pride in our building. We do, you know, we have a great cleaning staff. If there's anything, if you know me, that's one of my important pet peeves is we want it clean. <laughs> And uh, we have a great cleaning staff, so they, it, the building looks great. And when people walk in, they say, wow, <laughs> then I know we've done our piece. Yeah. And uh, it's been an interesting 14 years. Um, I went to college to be a teacher. I wish I had gone for business like Allison did. So that's why it's a good segue to Allison. <laughs> she yep. took the business classes. I mean, I worked at Taylor Corporation for 35 years. That's where I learned my business on the job and absolutely a great way to do it. But um, she did it the official way by getting that degree and brings in the pieces that I missed in, when I went for education versus the business. Yeah, well, that's that's a sounds like a great partnership. And yeah, we do hear that a lot with the entrepreneurship people starting the ideas and uh, wishing they had a little bit more business. And, and so Allison, so yeah, you you jumped in this so you had a little customer service experience prior to that uh, uh how, what kind of role and in, in business side do you bring into the the business well starting out um i had also been at taylor corporation prior um and starting out i was actually going to do both jobs for a while um but quickly led into just deciding i wanted to be here because it was a lot of fun um, started out just working with customers. Then I rolled into doing some accounts payable and payroll and learning more about the financial aspect and um, doing those types of things. And then working with the staff and um, scheduling and doing all of those pieces. So it's really looking at, you know, budgeting things and where we're actuals are at 
Um, I've learned a lot more about accounting than I ever probably thought I would, um, not going into school for accounting. So that was really good for me um, because now all the things that I did learn in college now make sense because I'm using them versus just balancing my own checkbook. So like it makes sense now. Um, but for me, as, um, what I like get to do and enjoy doing every day is really working with the staff, making sure that each team is you know, prepared and ready for what's going to be coming when we've got a really busy day. Um, and I help with the hiring, help with the marketing, all of those aspects, a little bit of everything. I was just going to say, Shane, if I can just say it, she does it all. Okay. All right. She does it all. <laughs> so it kind of does it all. And Pam, you've probably been in, you know, in the industry for a long time too, but both of you, um, I'm going to hit on something that Allison talked about the staffing. You got great staff and all of that. And, and right now it seems like it's, it's hard to find staff. And so I'm, I'm assuming as an entrepreneur, you've had to step in and clean the bathrooms or do whatever it takes. But, uh, on the staffing side, uh, how hard is that for an entrepreneur when you're trying to run your business, but yet at the same time, you have to work in it. Can you kind of talk about the, the two aspects of that? Yeah, I think over the years, we've worked with a lot of people that have said, you need to focus on your business, not work in it. But we know we still have to work in it. Like we have to be engaged. We have to be in working with our staff and with our customers, um, but maybe not 100% of the time, because then we will miss things on, you know, the in the business, the financials and whatnot. Um, but it is a really fun place to work. So it hasn't been maybe as hard for us to find staff. Um, but we, we have a big philosophy here too. Like I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't ask our staff to do. So I wouldn't ask them to clean the bathrooms if I wouldn't be willing to do it myself. I wouldn't be willing to go do serve a table if I wouldn't ask anybody else to do. Now, would somebody want me to go cook food in the kitchen? Probably not. I would do it, but you wouldn't want me to. But yeah. that's the way we look at it. We got to find those people that play to their strengths, do with what they are good at doing and have them in the right role. Yeah, that's 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 great. To, great to hear. Uh, you know, one of the other things uh, as a asset to the community, uh, I, I don't know if you knew it coming in about how big of a, a, an attraction it really is uh, for people coming to Maine Cato. Uh, I mean, my niece and nephew, they uh, are in St. Cloud and big bowling family. And, you know, they've, they've, they've come down here for bowling tournaments and, and things like that. But uh, did you see the wow zone as a, uh, as a regional attraction uh, when, you, when you were starting it? Yes. I mean, that was our hope. And it has fulfilled that. You're absolutely right. It becomes, uh, if you come to the to Mankato, you, sh you need to go to the wow zone. And we see a lot of our sports teams. And we see that from really all areas of people. Uh, they've been to the wow zone because they saw it on the Facebook or, you know, they checked what to do in Mankato. And um, yes, it's just really cool to have a facility that is good for all ages because a lot of times we see families too from like as you mentioned your families come from different directions they meet in the middle and we are that regional hub absolutely yeah, yeah. so well well great so uh, just one last kind of couple things here uh you know you do a a great job of uh even with some of you my other classes of being a, a supporter of the community, uh, you know, we have some events where we bring like the My Place kids out to go bowling and pizza and, and things like that. Can you just talk about the role of, of uh, as a community member and giving back through, uh, through different organizations? And I know, Pam, you've been involved with suicide prevention programs and, and that whole aspect of, of being a, a community member uh, and supporter. Well, I'm going to start with it, and if Allison wants to add, she can, but I'm going to say this is the heart where my heart is, and as a business owner, I love that I can do this because it means so much to me to be able to help various groups. Um, for example, I am in Rotary. We're in Kiwanis. Allison's in Kiwanis. You know, I'm an optimist, Civitan, Lions. Sertoma and all of our these service clubs do so much in our community and we have been able to provide them a place to meet 
Um, we have, we don't even keep track of the donations we give out. We get so many requests and we try to do something for everyone. It, you know, again, you can't do big things, but you can do little things and help everyone. And that's our goal. And we've been the place for fundraisers. Um, it, it just, it just gives my, it gives, warms my heart that we can do that. You know, again, as an owner, I can make that decision. And I love it when I see other com community businesses doing it. The, and there are many others. I can't even begin to name it because I would leave others out. But I do believe that's an important component of our businesses and our community. We are, we're here because of our community. They provide us, actually, we tell our employees, I don't pay your paycheck. Our customers make pay your paycheck. When they come in that door, they pay the paycheck. But when our community comes in and supports us, we want to support our community. Yeah. And we have been doing that from day one since we opened the doors. And that was always an important, we felt, value that we needed. We want to have instilled in all of our employees as much as we can. Okay. To know that giving back to our community is very, very important. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, and and uh, we yeah I definitely appreciate all the in the community. And so, last question here, and Allison, um, uh, jumping in and into the last tips for you know future women in entrepreneurship. You, we all talk, you know, entrepreneurship and starting business, but you know, and this is kind of for both of you too. But is there, a, you know. Is there something as an, a woman entrepreneur that uh, that stands out to you and tips for our up and aspiring entrepreneurs? Um, I think one of the things, and I say this as a mom too, uh, self-confidence is huge. You have to be confident in yourself and know that you have the ability to do anything that you want to do and you really work hard for it. Um, that would probably be my number one thing, because I think a lot of the times um, women, mothers, we might sometimes lose ourselves in the business. And then you kind of we are the worst critics of ourselves. So <laughs> being confident and knowing that you are doing what you can do every single day and you're doing the best at it and just keep going. That's awesome. Yeah. Pam, would, you want to wrap it up here? One last sure. one, Pam? Yep. I would just like to add, I think another item that we try to do as a business is support our, our moms, our, our families. You know, we have moms and dads that have kids. And we really, as a business, try to support them. And we're in a business that allows us to be a little more flexible. Uh, and we do that. We want to make sure our moms can be moms, our dads can be dads and still come in and do the job when they're here and, the, and do it you know, in for their hours. But um, I would just like to say one last thing, as an entrepreneur, you know, being in the business and working, and I'm now in my late 60s, you know, you gotta think about the future of when you're no longer here. And really that is where Allison comes in and having someone in doing the work with you the last 14 years, because she came in at the beginning I feel very confident if I were gone today, the business, both Victory Bowl and Wild Zone are in good hands. And I, I that gives me some, yeah. um, I don't feel quite so stressed. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that's in general, all of our teams, we always say, train somebody to be the next you because you want to be able to have somebody that you can rely on when you need them, whether there's health things that come up or just life changes that come up. We always want to have somebody that in any situation can step up when you need them to the most. So having that team built is huge. Oh, that's, well, that's great. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the tips and some great uh, advice there. Uh, but it's been a, a pleasure visiting with you and, uh, you know, kind of celebrating the, the Women Entrepreneurship Week and, and uh, you know, continue doing the, the wonderful things that you're, you're doing in the community and it, it is much appreciated. And thank you, Shane, for all you do. Yep.